for those of you who have been watching these shows for a long time, you know that one of my favorite seafoods are mussels. I, I think they're absolutely the best shellfish I've ever had in my life. Well, Madoka on Bainbridge Island does them just a little bit different. They have steamed green curry mussels, and I can't wait to try them. Chef Al Alvin Benoya. Benoya, is that right? That's right. All right. Nice to have you here. Now, tell, tell us about green curry, because I, I've had the regular uh, mussels. Well, green, green curry, um, this is a, a, a type curry paste. They usually have a red, green, okay. or a yellow. Uh, green is kind of in the middle in terms of heat. Um, I like using this uh, not only for the flavor that it has, it's not too hot, it's not too mild, mm -hmm. and it has just a wonderful color when it's, when it's finished. And um, I'm incorporating these with Pen Cove mussels. Oh, they're beautiful. From, uh, well, you've got shellfish. a lot of things here in front of you, Alvin. Let's, let's get let's going Let's get here. started. Let's There's get a few start. components. The actual putting together the dish is very quick, but setting up for it is what takes uh, a mm -hmm. certain amount of time. And what I'm going to do here, so I'm just going to peel the ginger a little bit. That's a neat trick, too. If you have to peel ginger, use a spoon and you won't lose any of the good stuff. Just the, the skin slips right off. Comes right off. So no, that's that. not preheated or anything. That's, that's just the way it is. What do you mean? The, well, I mean to get the skin to come off easily like right, that. Right. You don't have to blanch it in boiling water first or anything. Just use the, the edge of your spoon and it scrapes the skin right off. Yeah, and using a peeler, you wind up wasting a lot I of would the think, ginger, yeah. too. And then the microplane grater. Microplanes are great it's to have really because good way it to go. makes it fine enough to where you don't, uh, it's pretty unobtrusive in the dish. Yeah, so it gives it a that. nice, um, it just sort of disappears into it. No, yeah, sorry, I'm going to move this out of the way just for a second. And when you want it, I will so give you a great that up. I have my chopped garlic ready. You know, ready. there's something about the fresh ginger. Even though there's probably ginger mm. in the green curry paste, when you use the fresh stuff, it's just, even if your <coughs> guests never even know it's there, you get that wonderful experience of the smelling it and okay, a little bit the of you want to do is just cut off that little root nub. And I usually use about the first three to four inches. And what I do here to extract all the oils is kind of heat it up a little bit. Oh. And that'll get all the essence from the lemongrass. What a great idea. And then you take and then you just, oops, excuse me, almost lost her there. Give it a split. Now we're going to heat up our uh, saucepan to make the coconut base. Okay. This one here first. Just a little bit of oil to coat. And we're going to add our lemongrass our ginger, a little bit of garlic. I love that combination of ginger and garlic. You kind of have the highs and the They're lows of the flavor spectrum. In, in a way, way yeah. yeah, they are. They're kind of... Uh, they I all think work together really well. They yes. do. Now, tell me a little bit about how you design the menu at Madoka, because, you know, I, I loved your food at Axis. I loved your food at Ponte, and it seems better than ever now at Madoka. And, and the fact that you're right there on Bainbridge Island where I live makes it all the <laughs> better. Yeah, and I haven't seen you there in a while. I haven't been in in a while, but I'll be in again soon. Um, well, you know, a lot of what, what I'm doing there, uh, the Pan Pacific tagline on our, on our restaurant name has to do with uh, using ingredients that are primarily local, mm. and we try to emphasize... Um, culture, uh, uh, different uh, influences from around the Pacific Rim. Excellent. So uh, this, this dish really exemplifies that and that I'm using a local product, Penco Mussels, and I'm using a Southeast Asian influence oh, on the dish. You know, I can smell that lime zest right above the ginger. Isn't it wonderful? It's wonderful. I mean, I feel like I'm already somewhere tropical. <laughs> well, the combination of aromas that we have on, right here now, uh, coming out of that pan and off this lim or, uh, lime, uh, remarkable. And, you know, that is a, that's the odor, the, the aroma that you get in your kitchen that the whole family goes, ooh, what's for dinner? Okay, That's a good feeling uh, if you're cooking. We've bloomed that really well. We're going to take half the lime, and we want to dry that out. bloomed it. And, yeah. You know, sometimes, I, because I didn't grow up with it, I'm intimidated by... Asian or Polynesian flavors, and yet you make it all look so simple. Okay, now we're adding our coconut. Now that the uh, lime juice has dried out a little bit, we have a really intense uh, combination of flavors here. It's almost like the, the sugars coconut. in that lime juice caramelized a little. And then okay. the coconut milk. Now that's going to be infused into the coconut milk. Thank you. Delightful. You know what I forgot to add to that? Is my uh, Thai chili. This oh, is, a little bird's eye chili? Yeah, this, this is what's going to add the heat. Those no, are the is, best. That, is that real hot? It's, I mean, it's got yeah. a real sharp heat to it, but okay. very quick. 
and uh, it's a very bright heat. Isn't yeah, it? it's not yeah. one of those lingering. So that should um, forgive me, but this should have been added a little bit earlier. Yeah, well, right. you know, there's enough fat in the coconut milk that'll probably carry the flavor just as if it had been sautéed yeah. anyway. I think we'll be okay. So we're gonna cook that now for about 10 minutes. I need to add just a little bit of brown sugar, and this kind of balances out the the sauce. Oh, so this is very Thai, isn't it? Yeah. So so what this is here is a base. Okay. This is uh, part the first base. The second base. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit here. This one. Yeah, just okay, a little bit. Be kind of hot. Um, this can be done ahead and and properly cooled. This will last in the refrigerator for for a couple of days. So if you're planning an event, get this out of the way, get it done. And another item, the other uh, part two of the base. I have base part two. The green <laughs> curry here. Now this is the green okay. curry paste. And what I what I like to do whenever I use green curry, the, if you were to use this alone, which you could, you're not going to get the same uh, brilliant color. No, indeed not. So what I do is I add a spinach puree. Oh, nice. And what I've done is uh, so all that chlorophyll is going to give you the really, the really brilliant color. So you've got, you got a you've got a Kelly dark, green there. Green back. <laughs> That's really green. So I take the uh, what I do is I just take uh, spinach leaves, cover the blades in a blender, and just add your spinach leaves a bit at a time. Nice. And you get this beautiful green yeah. coloring. Oh. It's very neutral, so it's not going it, to. It'll actually temper the the uh, curry paste a little bit. You know, I buy that same brand of curry paste in a small container for home, and it, it just sort of lives in the refrigerator. It goes can forever. Can I keep it forever? <laughs> yeah, you can okay. keep it forever. So I sometimes wonder, like, I am think, I going to... I think it has a half-life. <laughs> <laughs> so, But okay. it's so good. It just, um, it's changed the way I cook, really, discovering those curry pastes. So here's what I've done, is I've, I've mixed it in a one-to-one, -one, the green curry and the uh, spinach puree. This is looks That's so done. good, Alvin. Okay, your coconut milk is boiling. Okay, so now. This thing's going. So how long does the mussels take to cook? Now, this is the easy part. Once you have all these other items staged, I have one that's uh, a chilled, ready to go coconut Oh, okay. Base. So we won't need this at we all? We won't need that one. That was just for demonstration purposes. Bye. This takes <laughs> literally three minutes. Okay. Okay, three minutes. It's very quick. Mussels. So right. Not even, probably not even that. Okay. Get that ice out of there. Now, mussels, especially ones from Penn Cove, which I find are the best mussels on oh, earth. Oh, I agree. They are extraordinary. They're aren't sweet, they? tender. Um, just just the beautiful. clean water, but then it's also just that um, particular variety of mussel seems. They just have a wonderful really nice. flavor and texture. Now, I see you picking through me, just trying to get rid of any that. Um, yeah, you want to check that might give you problems. Some, the ones that are tightly closed, you, you kind of push them diagonally a little bit to, to, to make double sure that little. they're okay. Yeah. But the ones that are open, something you have to be wary about. So I just kind of pinch them, and if they start closing, they're still alive. The great thing that they do at Penn Cove is they have this machine that cuts it off right at the. Uh, at the, uh, the, the, the beard. beard. Remember the days of having to pick all those beards off? Oh, yeah. That was like the first thing I did when I came in. If you were to pull it all the way off, you're basically killing the muscle. So yeah. what they do is they snip it off at a, at a position where it allows it to stay alive. When you buy these at your fishmonger or grocery store, always ask uh, what the harvest date was. They should be able to provide that for you. Okay, okay, so okay. let's make them hot. All right, here we go. Got a little oil on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Let's have a little they water, too. <laughs> All right, okay. add your mussels. These are going to start opening up here real quick. You don't like cover these or anything, way. huh? Oh, I'm sorry. There it is. I took it out of your way. Oh, it's <laughs> hiding it from me. A little bit of chocolate. keep you on your toes. And I like to cook the green curry just a little bit. Ooh, oh, yeah. Crack the heat oh. out. Oh, my. Now, just shake the pan a little bit. Once they start opening up, you want to lessen the amount of times that you shake the pan because you're going to shake the muscle meat out of the... Yeah. Most of those are open pretty good. Yep, right they're there. starting to open right there. Good it's fragrance again, too. Size it'll go. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We turned it down. Uh, okay. So now they're opening up. I'm adding my coconut mixture. Just a little bit. Maybe about uh, half a cup, maybe. Oh, now and I see them opening, too. And then... Just a little bit of water. Some, if you want it thicker, don't add the water. But I like it just a little bit thinner so it doesn't coat the muscle too much. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so you're replacing the water that evaporates in the steam. Yeah. And we're developing the sauce here. And at this stage, about half of them are open. The final touch is to add a little bit of torn basil. And this adds yet another layer of uh, really fresh fragrance and flavor to the sauce. And, and this see gets... tearing up the basil, so that's going to look good when we present it. Is there mm -hmm. a, a trick to getting them 
No, I just like to tear them just to get the pieces distributed really well. I can't wait to taste these. Okay. Exactly. And you can see they're just about done. Once they're all opened up, they're about 30 seconds away from being done. You don't, once they open up, they're basically cooked. But I'm oh, going to like finish the sauce up really a little bit good. here. We'll get our plate. All right. And we're just about done. Okay. Do you have your fork ready? I have my fork. <laughs> have fork, will travel. You bet. There you go. This is a good batch of mussels. They're all. Look at the green color on yeah. the That is so on bright the green. It's just the uh, true green. And I love that trick of using the spinach puree. And now that, you've, uh, now that we've added the basil at the end, you get kind of a real hit of basil fragrance, which to me really adds to the whole whole experience. Alvin, that is it. just beautiful. Alvin, I'm going to try that try. one right there. This one's got my name on it. I saw this one. It's calling out to me. Yeah, well, this one's got a little bit of shell out. Oh, right. mm. that is even better than it looks. Mm. Good. Oh. And that sauce. Really good, good Alvin. Right. Delicious. Delicious that stuff. Sauce is fantastic. Thank you. Mm. If you've never had these, like I have never had them, I'm going to have them again.